Praise God. All right. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of Philippians, please. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. And we're in the fourth chapter of Philippians. We're going to read number 19. Philippians 4 and 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you. And we praise you for the provision that's found in Christ Jesus, Lord. I pray as we conclude our, our teaching here on this beautiful book of Philippians, Lord, that you would encourage us, that you would give us more joy, more strength, more faith to believe you, Lord, in our lives, to trust you, that you will provide for our needs according to your riches and glory. We thank you for the living word of God. We promote the word. We lift it up and ask you now, Lord, to strengthen your people by the power of the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Today we're coming to the fourth and final chapter of our encouraging book about joy in the believer's life and how to connect with that joy in our lives. I mean, we can talk about joy till we're blue in the face, but we want to talk about how do we connect with joy? How do we receive joy in our lives? Remember, Nehemiah 8.10 says the joy of the Lord is our strength, and we need strength as believers. And so by receiving the joy of the Lord, we are receiving also as a companion the strength of God. And Paul encouraged the believers in Ephesians that, that they might be quickened in their inner man, that they might be strengthened in the inner man and become mighty in the spirit. And uh, there are a lot of people who become strong in physical body. Today, being the Super Bowl, we're going to see uh, individuals who are strong in body, right? And uh, they're going to show their athletic prowess and their skills out on the football field. But in the spiritual life, Paul said, Exercise profits a little. Exercise is good. We all need to exercise. It's good for our physical body. But godliness is of great gain. And so we need to be powerful and mighty in the spirit. And I find that as you get strong in the things of God, as your spiritual man is strengthened, it works its way out into the uh, other facets of your life. And so the focus and the priority should be up on, on our spiritual life. Paul begins this chapter admonishing the brethren to stand strong in God. Paul said in Ephesians 6.10, Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. He didn't say be strong in yourself. He said be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And so our strength comes from the Lord. And we must uh, rely and depend and look to God for every detail of our life. And here Paul is encouraging them to uh, stand strong in the Lord. We're called to stand fast or stand firm in the Lord. Let's look at chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. Therefore, my beloved and longed-for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Here we see the tenderness of Paul again, speaking to these people in a, uh, a, a, a tenderness and a compassion, showing the love that he had for them and the joy that he had in just thinking about them and thinking about the time that he would go once again and, and, villi, uh, excuse me, and visit the, the village or the city of Philippi. And there he would uh, fellowship with the brethren. I hope on Sunday mornings that you look forward to coming together with the people of God and spending time with those that know God. We are a unique people that most of the people around us don't know God, but we know the Lord. We have a relationship with the God of the universe through Jesus Christ. And we have intimacy with God. And we have the blessing of God upon us. We have the blessing of Abraham. And the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham came upon the Gentiles through faith in Jesus Christ. Well, Abraham was a blessed man in all facets of life. And we are to be blessed people. And God wants to pour out an abundance of blessing in our life. And, and that is our right and privilege in Jesus Christ. And so Paul rejoiced in these people and rejoiced in the knowledge that soon he would be with them to fellowship and enjoy their company. We're called to stand fast. It's interesting. Stand firm. That would speak to the idea that as a boat is anchored in a harbor, and as the winds prevail upon that harbor, and maybe the, the waves of the sea begin to try to loosen that anchor in the sand and drive that anchor from its root, from its foundation. And there are tribulations of life, there are winds of life, there are adversities of life that would try to drive the anchor of your faith away from Jesus Christ and from the Word of God. 
and get you to trust something else or to doubt the Word of God and believe that the Word is not what it says it is and God will not do what He promised. But God is faithful, that He's not a man that He should lie. Has He said it? Will He not do it? Has He spoken it? Will He not bring it to pass? The book of Numbers speaks to this truth. God will bring forth His Word in your life, but you must trust Him and stand upon that Word. Stand fast, stand firm as an anchor to the soul. Anchor your faith in the Word of God, in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not to collapse under persecution and tribulation that comes upon us through the world, the flesh, and the devil. And believe me, all those that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, will suffer tribulation. It's part of the package deal. Remember Paul said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. We get to suffer for the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. It's part of being a Christian. It's part of knowing Christ. Now, we don't like it, but... Paul said in James 1, 2, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing the trying of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. God uses trials to refine us, to make us better. And we need to be made better, don't we? We don't want to be left like we are. There's a lot of rough edges on us. We're a diamond in the rough in many ways. And, and we need the trials of life, even though we don't like it always, but we need them for change to come into our life. And so, Paul said he rejoiced in tribulations. Can you say that? Can I say that? Uh, it's hard to rejoice in tribulations. It's hard to rejoice in trials. And the devil is always there to sit on your shoulder and whisper in your ear and tell you how your life is going to completely fall apart uh, in the next two weeks, the next month, this year. You know, And uh, he is the bearer of bad news. But God is the bearer of good news. And he speaks a good word in your heart and your life. And he has good plans for you and I. And I don't care what circumstances are saying, what life is saying, what life is dictating, what the world is dictating. God has a good plan for our life. And he's going to fulfill it. We just need to trust him and believe upon him. And remember this little adage, God is never in a hurry, but he's always on time. God works off Mexican time. And that's a little different than American time. We're always in a hurry, you know, in America. Push and shove, we've got to get to the next place. And that's one of the things I noticed in New York. Everybody's moving very quickly. I also noticed that they are more on the thinner side, and that makes sense, because they're walking a lot and they're moving real fast. And when you get into the subways, it's kind of like a stampede. You better move or you're going to be run over, you know, uh, going from one destination to the next. But God is not moving in such a hurry in our lives. He has a plan and he has a foreknowledge. He already knows uh, where you're going to be tomorrow, next week, next month, where you're going to live, what you're going to be doing. And so he has your life planned out. And uh, it's being put together step by step, piece by piece. So we need to trust the Lord that he will bring about his purposes and his plans completely on time, right? And uh, your destiny will arrive on time. But we need in the meantime to be faithful when we experience those trials of life to rejoice, rejoy over again. You have to, as an act of the will, say, I will rejoice in this circumstance. I don't understand it. I don't like it. But I will, by faith, rejoice. I will say, praise be unto God. And I will rejoice in the Lord. Hey, if, if Paul did it, we should do it. Because Paul had a lot more problems. The guy was in jail. I mean, you know, we're not in jail today. Some people are in jail today. And if this message is going out to a person in jail, praise God. Rejoice. Because God has a good plan for your life as well. But we need to rejoice in all circumstances of life and to stand firm when the world comes against us and the flesh tries to entice us and the devil. I believe the church is under attack today, maybe now more than ever, because I know the devil knows his time is soon. The time is going to be soonly over. And the time is short now. And so the devil is doing everything he can to keep people out of the kingdom of God and to keep Christians from moving forward in power and might and doing the work of God in the earth. And so we are under an assault. Certainly in Paul's age, the church was under attack. And during the ministry of the Apostle Paul, he wrote these letters because many of the churches were suffering persecution and division and tribulations and false doctrine was entering the church. So Paul wrote these letters to, to bring correction, admonition, encouragement, and strength to the brethren. The church is under three forces that attack it. And, and you could say individually as a Christian, those three forces apply to us as well. And I mentioned them already. The world, the flesh, and the devil. 
And the world is that ungodly, wicked influence existing in the earth today that has no interest in the things of God and His Word. And it will entice and deceive the true believers in drawing them into compromise with what we believe and stand for and try to get believers to move away from their walk in God. 